Hey everybody, Red Mage here. Welcome back to this series where I go through different RPG products that I have and give them a quick flip through and review. Uh, I guess this is another haul style video. I've been doing a lot of these recently and I don't think um, I'm going to do more, <laughs> at least not for the foreseeable future. This will be the last one for a while. But I just got back from LVO, which is the Las Vegas Open, and I picked up some stuff there and I wanted to share it um, and just talk also about LVO. It was an awesome experience. Really, really cool. Um, it's a Warhammer 40k event, for those of you who don't know. I, I play 40k a lot. Uh, my army is Necrons. And uh, the uh, the big tournament was won by a Necron player, so that was really cool. And it was a cool list. Um, but uh, really, it was just, the, you know, it was a great event. It was a good time. I'd never been to Vegas before, so that was really fun. And uh, we just, uh, my brother-in-law and I, we just uh, went down there and... You know, got to do a whole bunch of cool stuff, and got to play a lot of 40k, and I picked up a, a few cool books. So I wanted to show you guys some of those. Now some of these also just came in the mail, um, but I'm going to be going through a few of them today. One of the ones that I picked up there was Into the Odd by Chris McDowell. Now this one I've been meaning to get for a while. Um, it is a really odd book. I mean, <laughs> they, they chose the, the name properly. First of all, this, this edition is great. It's small. I think this is the second edition, maybe the third edition. I don't know which uh, printing this is uh, exactly, but I had been meaning to pick it up for a long time. And I was I was I wanted a physical copy, but you know, just shipping costs and things like that prevented me from getting it. I just decided to you know to hold off on this one in particular. Um, I had it in my shopping cart like three times and I removed it. And I was like, do I really want it uh, for the, the cost of all that stuff? And and I decided yes, but when I was there, I, uh, there was a booth. And so they just had it in there and it was great. They had a deal. Uh, I talked to the guy at the booth. He was super cool. Um, and so they gave me this and then he, he offered me, I said, email me um, or email us at this, at this place and we can get your PDF as well. So that was really cool. Into the Odd. Now, for those of you who don't know Into the Odd, it's their business card, um, free lead of course, uh, it's, Bastion Land Press, Free League Publishing, um, Chris McDowell, John Knorr, I'll put this book together. It's an RPG, and it's a setting, and an odd world. That's the, that's, you know, putting it lightly. This is so bizarre. Everything about this book is bizarre. The art, the construction, well, no, I shouldn't say the construction. The construction's great. The art, the flavor, and the world all come together in this very bizarre very bizarre thing. Um, and I'm sure most of you know Into the Odd. It has that eclectic, you know, punk vibe going on where old art is taken and modified and you know, scribbled on and is put next to weird, you know, kind of psychedelic, nonsensical images. And it all kind of comes together in these weird ways. It fits really well with the tone, again, of the writing and the world itself, which is this kind of hodgepodge amalgamation of different genres and, you know, fantasy with sci-fi and steampunk and a bunch of stuff going on there. But the rules here are great. And they have been used in lots of other games. I've taken the rules, for example, for injuries, um, and for, for health and, you know, injuries and all that stuff. I've taken that from this and, and just ported it right into my Shadow Heart. Uh, Shadow Heart. <laughs> I haven't played too much Baldur's Gate. Shadow Dark um, injury system or my Shadow Dark Curse of Strahd game. So, uh, you know, this is a great book, but it is bizarre. It has that weird look. And that's not going to be to everyone's taste. You know, in fact, I, I, I'm not sure it's exactly to my taste either. But it's interesting, and it's got some really cool ideas. So, yeah. It's got great maps, it's got great rules, it's got great ideas. It's very, very inspiring, but it has a different sort of inspiration to me than something like, you know, Luca Reitz's books with, um, you know, the uh, Ultraviolet Grasslands or something like that. That's much more... Dreamy, maybe is a way of putting that. Um, this is more eclectic. For me, this is like talking to that weird friend who's super creative um, and who just like has all these really crazy ideas. Um, and you're like, whoa, 
That's interesting. I, I never would have put that together, and okay. Wow. Huh. Yeah, that's sort of how I feel like this with this book. Uh, Ultraviolet Grasslands is like a weird, a weird dream um, that you have, and it stays with you. This is like, yeah, talking to a weird, creative, bizarre friend who has, you know, very strange taste, but who is really, you know, creative and, and whose worlds are always unique. Um, a lot of great ta a lot of great tables in the back of this book too. It's another great reason to have it. But it, it just feels a little bit like, you know, I don't know, so many games take their inspiration from Into the Odd. Um, and, uh, you know, games in the OSR, it's a major contributor in that, in this field, you know, Chris McDowell, and, uh, you know, pretty, pretty important in that, in the OSR community. And it's a great book in terms of its construction. It's, it's a, you know, it's a little look right on a shelf, which is not the only reason to get a book, but again, for a weird mad collector like me, it's often one of the reasons why I get something is because, you know, just how it looks, the presentation of it and all that. So this is a great one in that regard. And I think, again, the world itself is interesting. The rules are cool. Um, just that, you know, art presentation isn't going to be to everyone's style. It's not everyone's taste. But I like it. So that's one thing I got. We also got a bunch of dice and stuff like that, but I'm not really going to show that stuff off. This is something else that came while I was gone. It's the physical copy of Aegon, which I just reviewed recently. Um, and the physical copy is gorgeous, just like the others. Uh, just like the PDF was, but I mean, you know. This is the physical copy. There's a couple extra pieces of art in the physical version, but I'm not going to flip through the whole thing, but just give you guys a look at that gorgeous, gorgeous presentation. The physical copy is is really good uh, in terms of its construction. I like it a lot. Um, I just love the way this book looks, man. I'm not sure why I love it so much, but I do. Um, it's great. It's got kind of a you know a nice textured finish. Um, now, one thing I wish is it didn't have this, uh, like, serial number stamped on the side. But other than that, that's a minor complaint. Um, it's really, really gorgeous. I just love it. I love this book. So that's another thing that came while I was gone. Now, something that I picked up, and I just, this is so bizarre, I had to get it, is the Zorro role-playing game. Now, I love Zorro. I was obsessed with the Disney's Legends and Heroes, you know, Guy William Zorro when I was a kid. That we had it on like you know VHS recordings from back in the day and uh, so I watched those you know like a dozen times and this is heavily inspired by those but it's also it comes from you know like the uh, the Curse of Capistrano the uh, Guy William or sorry not the Guy Williams the Basil Rathbone movies and the you know uh, all that um, you know Douglas Fairbanks as Zorro I love Zorro as a character um, I really liked The Mask of Zorro which came out you know when I was a kid the movie with Anthony Hopkins and Antonio Banderas and Catherine Zeta-Jones. And this, I have no idea how this is really, you know, I haven't even read through it all that much, but some of these art pieces are taken directly from stills from the Disney's Legends and Heroes. I mean, they just, you know, they just froze it, maybe even like traced over it. Um, I'm not sure how much I appreciate that. I mean, I, I like being reminded of the Disney's Legends and Heroes like this. This is just straight up from it's like a still from the show, which I'm sure they don't have the rights to. <laughs> but then they just, you know, drew it out or traced it out, and it's very clearly used as a, as a full thing. I can't say how much, again, how fun this game is. I don't know a lot about the rules yet. Uh, I, I really just got it because I am obsessed. I was obsessed as a kid with Zorro, and I saw that there was a Zorro role-playing game, so I, you know, I had to pick that up. There's a bunch of quick, you know, characters and... Um, you know, great little pieces of art throughout. But again, a lot of them are taken, it seems like, from other, um, you know, Zorro sources and then, tr like, you know, used as, I would say, not just taken directly, right? Not just not just lifted, but, like, very heavily, um, you know, very heavily lifted <laughs> from different other Zorro sources. Uh, in particular, a lot of those pieces of art definitely come from the Disney's Legends and Heroes ones. And you can tell, again, that a lot of the people love those. Um, you, there are rules for kind of playing in those sorts of adventures. Yeah, like this is just... I don't know if you can see that too well, but if you've ever seen those old Zoros, that's just, you know, Guy Williams and... Um, oh, I forget the actor who played Sergeant Garcia in that. But that's just them having a drink in the cantina, and it's all... It's all right there. <laughs> so anyway, this is just a funny little pickup. I loved Zorro, so I was like, I have to get that. 
Um, but uh, it's a good it's a good book. It's got a good construction. I think it was kickstarted a few years ago. I haven't seen anything about it except just that it you know it exists and <laughs> now I own a copy. So I don't know if I'll ever play this, but it's just going to go on my shelf. And uh, you know, once again, there's this uh, oops wrong side <laughs> the serial number which I'm not keen on, but it's just going to sit on my shelf probably at Zoro the role playing game, and uh, I'll bring it out from time to time and read through it. There, I think there's a, like a solo sort of adventure to teach you the rules in the back. I might play through that. I don't know if I'll play through this with other people, um, but if there's a Zora role-playing game, I have to make sure I, I had it. <laughs> anyway, thought it was interesting, so I, might, I thought I'd share that. A couple more things that I got. This one, also at the same booth as Into the Odd, is the Simbaroom core book. Now, I had been tempted to pick up Simbaroom from Free League for a long time, but I, you know, I love Free League, don't get me wrong, their stuff is great, but their shipping times are terrible. So I was like, eh, do I really want to pick this up? Do I really want to pick this up? And then um, I saw that they had a, you know, Free League had a table at, um, at LVO. And so I was like, well, I don't have to pay shipping and I don't have to wait. I'm going to get it. So I got this along with Into the Odd. I was this close to getting Vesson, which is their, you know, kind of, you know, uh, fairy tale steampunk. I'm not sure what you would call that, but it's, the, uh, it's, it's one of their other games, um, kind of like a, a dark fairy tale world. Um, but it's sort of like, you know, modern almost, or I guess, you know, like in the uh, 19th century Victorian era. It's really interesting. But Simbaroom, I'm sure you guys, you, you guys know Simbaroom. Many of you do already. And, and you know, Free League, so the, the, you know, the quality of this book is about as high as it gets. Simbaroom is gorgeous. Uh, the book has all of these trims on every page. I mean, it's, it's in terms of its presentation, it's absolutely top-notch. The art is of a very distinct style, which I, I like. It's, it's like one of the two artists who do the One Ring, which I've reviewed before. Um, it's like the more abstract art. Not abstract, but more digital, more high fantasy, less, you know, um, less particular. You know, things are a little indistinct, but it works really well here. The map of uh, the area is great. The Davakar, or Davakar, the Davakar Forest. Um, and just the, the world building here is excellent. The presentation of the different factions, the little um, bits of information, the quotes that are thrown in, sidebars that are given, all help you draw you in. And one of the things that I think is really cool, let's see if I can find one, are the maps and how they're, the maps of cities and stuff and how they're laid out. Um, See if I can find a good one. I'm going through. Yeah, this one. So it's a great map of the city, and there are numbers here. But then in the little legend here, the key, you have taverns, inns, entertainment, trade, other, and then squares and parks. And they're broken down into little colored diamonds so that you can easily, at a glance, see what's what and where things are. I like that because, you know, what's the first thing the players are going to look for when they come into a town? Taverns and inns, entertainment then trade. Then you have your other stuff over here, you know, temples and, and important people's houses and things like that. But the first thing they're going to do is look for taverns and inns. You have it on the map exactly where they are. Okay, well, if you're coming in from this gate, this is the closest tavern to you. That's the closest inn to you. Awesome. Really, really cool. Uh, that's something that I, I think I'm going to start doing when I make maps of towns. And uh, you know, I'm sure other people have done that, but it's really helpful. Rather than just having like an alphabetical list or just starting at the top and kind of doing it randomly, no. You have a list uh, of use, uh, in, in, you know, ranked in order of uh, usefulness to the players. That's great. Now, I, I can't say I know much about the Simper Room's um, rule set. Again, I haven't read through them. I, at some point, I do want to do a full review of Simper Room. This is, again, just going to be a quick flip through, uh, you know, because it's Marvel Hall. But... At some point, I'm going to do a, a more thorough review of this whole book, and at that point, I will talk about the rules. I've heard some things from some people that love the rules. I've heard a couple people well, kind of be a little bit less happy with the rules. So I'm interested to see how it actually goes and how it actually looks. Um, so yeah, this is just, you know, again, the art throughout this book is excellent. They have a piece of art for each class. Uh, there's three sort of like archetypes, and then there's, uh, you know, uh, basically fighter, thief, and mage. <laughs> and then there are different like subclasses. It, you, you can see how this would be a pretty easy 5e conversion. I don't mean like straight up the rules, but the templates 
for these, like, you know, classes and, and then subclasses fits with 5e pretty well. And so there's a 5e version of this. Um, okay, yeah, so this is all really cool stuff. Um, there's different races. And uh, overall, it's great. So I, 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 yeah, I think this is a great pickup. Like these little things here, I'm not sure if you can see them, but there's a, like, weird runes and images and then there's like where the writing was found in the world and what the scholars guess it is rules for abilities i'm just kind of jumping ahead because again i'm going to do a full review of this at some point but but for now just kind of giving you a, a flip through of it with the art really cool stuff simba room uh great great piece of monster art there really cool really cool book very glad that I picked it up with a little battle map at the end here. Uh, awesome. Cool character sheets that are built for the system as well. Simbaroom. I'm really excited to get into this one. If, if for no other reason, I think it'll really help my world building. I think I might just steal from this book quite a bit. Again, the construction is what you'd expect from Freely. Top of the line quality. So Simbaroom, another thing I picked up, and very glad that I did. All right, now this came while I was gone. Where Evil Lives, which is the MCDM book of boss battles. This is sort of a companion follow-up piece to um, uh, Flea Mortals, which I've reviewed before. It was one of the first things I reviewed on this channel, actually. Uh, this is a collection of dungeons or sort of like dungeon short dungeon adventures for levels 2 through 20. There's no there's no adventure for level 1, but there's a couple for level 10, a couple for level 11, a couple for level 12, I think. And so uh, it, it overall has quite a few uh, individual adventures and it, they're built around the monsters from where or from flea mortals. So if you have that book, uh, you you can run this pretty much. Um, if you don't have that book, I'm not sure where. I mean, you could get this individually, I think, now. But uh, it's pretty much a companion piece. But there's great individual art for this one. A, a, a couple pieces are used from the other book, but they're mostly just new for this. And, and this one has a lot of great art um, and great maps. And then it has just, you know, like, that's such a good piece. I love, I love the art in these books. But then you have a map for each of these adventures. And really it is very short dungeon crawls usually with a big boss fight and things have been set up so that the boss monsters, which are presented in Flea Mortals, have a good place for their abilities. Um, so the, the, these are essentially big you know, boss lairs that you can throw into any campaign with you know, minimal prep at different levels of play. It's really well done. And if you, you, know, if you like 5th edition, and you have Flea Mortals, you should get this. If you don't have 5th edition, you could still even you know, get this because some of the ideas are great. Now, they're going to be pretty specific to 5th edition, 5e. Um, but there are some, you know, you might be able to port things over a little bit. But I like this book a lot. I liked I liked Flea Mortals a lot. I like this one where Evil lives quite a lot. There's some great cool. There's some great ideas for encounters and for layers. And it, it's interesting because you see, you know, I, I read through the boss monsters in Flea Mortals, and I'm like, ooh, that's really cool. I have ideas about where that would go or what kind of adventure that would be a part of. And then I get this book, and I see some of them put into these other adventures. And I'm like, wow, I wouldn't have thought of that. I would have thought of it this way as opposed to that way. Um, and that's cool. To have you know new takes on things and to have combinations that you might not have expected. Such a great piece of art right there. But again, you expect nothing less from MCDM. The quality of their books is, is just top notch, and they're I think they're doing the best fifth edition stuff for today out there. If you're interested in fifth edition, if you're not, you know well, this is going to be something not 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 to your interests. But I think if you're going to play fifth edition, MCDM's path is the way to go these days. Really great, creepy piece of art there. So, yeah, this is just a fantastic book. I love that monster. Look at that guy. He's going to eat the world. Um, and the adventures are all sorts. I mean, they go, again, from level 2 to 20, and so 
there's a sort of rising um, difficulty, obviously, a rising sort of level of epicness. But one of the things that MCDM does well is even low-level adventures are pretty epic. That they don't have, um, you don't just have kind of boring level two adventure. They're all interesting. But especially as you get to higher levels, you're dealing with really, really crazy, nasty creatures, and lots of them. Ooh, that's a great monster right there. You can't really see because of the glare, but great piece of art for a creature there. Now, this book is fantastic. Highly recommend if you can get a, if you can get a hold of it if you're interested in fifth edition. There's at the end there's a bunch of uh, dragon encounters. There's a good vampire, frost vampire um, encounter. Uh, lots of cool epic you know aberration fights and uh, lots of cool uh, yeah again these dragon fights are the kind of the highlight of the game. And I, I think there's one for each of the major dragons from MCDM's book, and the dragons are really powerful. And it would be an epic, epic way to end a campaign. Or even if just a, a sort of the climax of the campaign. So, Where Evil Lives. Fantastic book. Um, it's pretty thick. As I said, there are adventures from level 2 to 20 and a couple uh, at a few levels. They skip level 1, but every other level has at least one adventure, sometimes two. So it's a big book and has quite a, quite a few uh, options here. Um, you can take them straight out of this book or you could modify them as you see fit. I know that Matt Colville really likes the idea of kind of um, modular material that you can pick up and put into different campaigns, and that's exactly what this is. So, highly recommend if you're into 5th edition, and even if you're not. The last two things that I got um, are kind of funny. I mean, again, they're, they're the Brown Colonia books. Uh, these are Jinx's Almanac and the Empire Wax Back. Now, I thought these were coming in uh, June. I just totally misread the date. It was actually January. So they came while, or just before I left. Um, and they're just exactly what you would expect from the Brown Colonia books. Great art, um, great flavor, funny. Um, but they're, you know, 5th edition. And, in, and they're not quite... Um, yeah, they're not quite as, I would say, expertly designed 5th edition material as MCDM is. What I mean is, like, this is the, the, the actual, like, stat blocks and, and ideas here really are firmly in the 5th edition wheelhouse. Whereas 5th edition, or whereas, like, the MCDM books, I think, are pushing that, you know, incorporating a lot of 4th edition ideas and making 5th edition really, really, really fun. This is much more in the flavor, uh, in the world building, in the, uh, the tone rather than the mechanics or, you know, doing something really cool with monsters or things like that. So, you know, you're not going to get that so much. There's not a lot of new, there's no new spells, there's no new, um, you, know, uh, you know, ideas in that, in that regard. There are some new classes and races, but they're pretty much firmly 5th edition in, in how they approach the game. But this is a collection of, of adventures, 10 adventures, that all kind of come fit together. And this is uh, an almanac. It's a, comp it's a compilation of a bunch of um, individual, like, releases that they gave, small, tiny, you know, releases with lots of different locations and adventures and, and rule sets and things like that. And so this is sort of a, just sort of a catch-all book. Um, Jinx's Almanac and The Empire Waxback is a campaign, uh, or at least 10 connected adventures. Once again, you get you know great art, great presentation. You know you cannot fault the Brun Colonia books for their presentation at all. Uh, really, really excellent. There's little you know again motifs of blood and wine spilled on the page. It's unclear what. Uh, one of the guys later on in the book is like a real villain, uh, and his stat block is completely covered in uh, probably blood, maybe wine, and so it's unclear. Some of his stats are a bit unclear, <laughs> and I don't know exactly if that was the intention or what, but it makes it a little hard to read. But, you know, it's kind of cool. Um, but in that case, maybe the presentation got a little bit ahead of itself. Um, but for the most part, this book is really well put together. Uh, funny adventures, but they all have sort of a, you know, a, a, you know that pulpy spaghetti fantasy <laughs> tone to them. Um, and, uh, and that's cool. There's some 
great adventures here, some of them a bit more dangerous, with, I would say, a fair amount of um, originality built on top of the 5th edition core. So, yeah, again, if you're, if you're running 5th edition, you, uh, you, you, you know, you do well to at least check out the Broncolonia books. If you're not, they might even be still be worth it, just for ideas, because they are they're pretty clever. I, I like them in that way. But the, but you know, if you don't want that silly tone, you're going to have to do some modifying, because there definitely is a tone to things. Now there are some great pieces of art or map. I know you can't really see it too well. This is going to be upside down, but it's the best I can do. There are some really good maps in these books. That's one of the things I love about them is the cartography and, and all that. Um, great, gruesome piece of art there, cooking people up. So, you know, once again, you know, I, I would reiterate what I said in my other review on the Brand Colonia books, which is there's great stuff in here. There's some weird stuff in here. Uh, there's stuff that you're probably not going to use. There's stuff that uh, you should use in any game, even if you're not doing 5th edition. But if you are playing 5th edition and you're looking for a particular tone and setting, then this is worth it. And if you're a collector, like me, then this is a unique product to have on your shelf. So I would I'd recommend it in, the, in that case. So yeah, here's the one I mentioned. There's a stat block back here, but you can't really read it. Or at least it's hard to read. Um, but that's okay. And then that guy's name is Moff Gideon. Uh, there's a lot of jokes like that, right? I'm Moff Gideon, of course. References to pop culture and to other products and things like that. So that's the Empire Wax Back. And then Jinx's Almanac. It's similar in its, again, presentation. It looks very much like, like the other ones. Reiteration of the map. Um, some new ideas. A few extra rules. But really, you're looking at world building and characters and magic items, um, locations, yeah, locations and, and stat blocks and things like that. Characters that you can run into. There's some creatures in here, monsters and things like that. And, you know, a couple adventures. Uh, but really what, um, what you're getting is sort of a combination of a bunch of other smaller products they've released before, or maybe just digital products. Yeah. So. Um, someone really likes their cats. Yep. Great book. <laughs> um, I love that piece, actually, of art right there. That's a really good one. It's an overgrown forest. With, you know, uh, embracing lovers in the distance. A giant bear. <laughs> and cursed cra you know, crash ships. There's some adventures in here, too. Uh, and I think I prefer the art in this book. It seems more particular to it. The other one, uh, The Empire Wax Back, is a lot of, um, seems like public domain art or old art that's been modified. Whereas this is, um, seems much more unique to it. Creepy character there. A uh, former vampire or something who is reformed or trying to reform herself. Kind of becoming a bit human or something like that. Kind of interesting. Some, <laughs> that's just, you know, Snake Plissken from uh, Escape from New York, Escape from L.A. Again, just, you know, you got to take that sort of tone. You got to take that stuff uh, because I love it, but it's just on the nose. Right? Playing right into it, not even really trying to hide it. Great piece of art down the back page of Adventures Hiding from a Dragon. So, Brand Colonia. So, all in all, um, that's all the stuff that I picked up at LBO and... And uh, just that came while I was gone. I like it. I'm happy with it. Um, am I going to play all of that? Probably not. <laughs> and I promise that I, I'm going to be moving away from these halls. I know I've done a lot recently. But um, it's been you know, the holidays, and I just haven't had a good schedule going of videos and things like that. But hopefully I'll get back into it, and I'll, I will probably take a lot of the books that I have been going through in these halls and doing you know more more deep reviews of them. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this, and I'll see you around in another video.